When the humans started spreading out to live on other species' worlds, to include our home world, we believed they would be easy to manipulate. At first, it was easy to get them to sacrifice their time, their labor, their resources, and make our lives just a little bit easier. This was surprising as they are primarily carnivores and we're strictly herbivores. Somehow, their carnivorous beings seemed to like living around us. It was odd. We didn't understand it. It also wasn't long before we found out that the humans found our form to be, what's the words they use? Oh yes, uh, cute, adorable, fluffy, although that's in reference to our tails and ears, and of course things like attractive, hot, and sexy. Since our appearance is an amalgamation of primarily what humans look like, yet we have characteristics of a creature they have on their own planet called a bunny, or they call it a rabbit. I have seen pictures, and we do have a few of these characteristics, but not many. Thankfully, we don't have any fur beyond our heads, ears, and tails. The humans seem to like this too, as they find it more appealing. The humans got along with everyone, as they like the idea of peace. It seems that so much war and fighting has exhausted them so much that they're almost repulsed by it. Yet you wouldn't know that if you broke one of the human societal rules, and they still had their own set of societal rules that they followed. A few that I have heard from the humans, and I know pretty well now, are pretty self-explanatory when you break them down. One like, do not willingly damage another's transportation. When my human friend Jake found that someone had taken a heavy object to his vehicle, I said, you seem to have a ding in your fender. He responded as he seemed to be preparing for a fight. They trashed my car, Alfred, between a couple of guys. That's real personal. I watched him travel over to the other human who had damaged his vehicle, and the resulting violence between them only ended as the female weapon they were fighting over told them both to stop. As soon as she stepped in between, it's though someone hit a pause button and they both just seemed to freeze in place. I didn't understand how they could possibly just stop the way they did with their aggressive feelings, yet the aggressive feelings seemed to never actually go away. When I inquired why the grudge, Jake told me, you don't mess with our boats or our vehicles. We really don't like that. The way he said that made me not inquire any further. Another instance surprised me as one of our warrens caught fire. It was nearly engulfed in flame when the human found out that a few of the young were actually still inside. Without hesitation, every human male that heard this ran into the flames while the females attempted to comfort the family who were crying for their lost ones. We watched as they ran straight into the mouth of hell as though it was one of their playgrounds. As the structure actually began to collapse, we thought for sure that they had all burned up. To our absolute shock and surprise, they came running out, crashing through the walls if need be, holding the children. Many of the humans are partially ablaze as they run straight to the medical staff, waiting and even refusing to be treated for their injuries until the children are already finished and on their way. This act of sheer insanity and sheer bravery made me actually inquire to another human I knew called Evan over another drink. When I asked him why they didn't hesitate and ran in, he said, we protect the innocent. And he said this with such conviction that I actually lowered my ears slightly and retreated a few steps. This was emphasized again when a young couple were found to be abusive to the young in the neighborhood. When the truth came out, our culture would simply ostracize them, shun them, and force them to live in shame. The humans had a much more direct approach. When the couple was found four days later, 
They had their right hand and foot completely amputated and seared shut so they didn't bleed out. Their tongues were completely removed, and over a dozen broken bones each, a multitude of contusions and lacerations all over their bodies and faces. Yet the part that made us all vomit was the removal of the male reproductive parts while the female parts had been burned shut. Even if the doctors could open it back up, the nerve damage was beyond extension. Neither actually wanted to live after that as they begged for others to end them. But they were actually repaired by the doctors is our culture. We found out shortly after why the left hand was left intact. When the bodies were found, as is our custom, the suicides are not given any honors. Instead, they are dropped in a hole and left unmarked. Whenever the humans were asked about this, they always gave the same answer. Don't worry about it. We never continue to ask. One other small item with humans has to do with their food, actually. Even though some human females actually believe it's funny to steal food from others' plates, this is a massive don't do it. Repercussions from the humans range from immediate expulsion from the setting to getting a fork actually shoved into the hand as they retreat with their so-called prize from the former plate. When visiting a human, never assume you can just eat food without being offered. You can quickly actually lose friends this way, and I now know this. If a human offers, then you are free to take or decline. They won't take offense. However, if the human raised or grew their food, they are very protective of it. We saw the pain this can cause when the human named Bill moved in across the road from my family. Like most of the other humans, he was fairly easy to get along with, mainly because he had come to our part of the galaxy to retire and perhaps find a female to live with. Many humans only did this for a short time usually, until the reality of being unable to procreate with a Lapin is impossible. Trust me. The doctors have tried to figure it out. Most either stick to themselves afterwards or simply leave. Bill himself didn't seem to be falling into this category that I could see, and he was a rather nice human, always ready to help. In his free time, he taught the local children how to deal with humans and showed them how to prep their bodies for adulthood. This was actually a human concept that we now embrace once we realized the results, of course. Bill's property was not very large, and from the road you couldn't see much except the front lawn, which was very small, and the domicile itself. But on the other side of the domicile from the road, he created a massive garden. He said that he had a green thumb, which scared me at first, as this is a sign of decoil disease, after I found out that this is a euphemism, I took notes on how he created such a wonderful garden. It seems as though he grew far more than he could eat, which is probably why the neighborhood family caused him trouble. I heard Bill cursing one day, and I hurried over to see what was wrong. I thought he might have been injured until I saw him walking around the garden simply cursing and kicking at the ground. I found out that someone had actually come in at night and taken many of his ripe vegetables. I tried to calm him down, of course, noting how that at least 30% still remained, but that seemed to increase his agitation. By the next day, Bill was setting up lights to shine into the garden to catch the thieves, Unfortunately for him, by the time the light woke him up and he arose from his bed and looked out, of course, all he could see is the tail of the thieves disappearing as they jumped over the fence. Believing he had scared the thieves off, he decided he was going to relax a little bit, only to find a piece of cloth over the lights a few nights later and, of course, more items stolen. He asked me how long it would take to import a dog. 
although that is when I had to remind him of the law forbidding, strictly forbidding, carnivorous hunting animals on this planet. Bill understood, but he was still upset and said, Fine, I'll handle those little bastards myself. When I inquired if he was going to kill them, he actually didn't answer, and that made me nervous. A little less than a week later, the entire neighborhood was awoken by the sirens of our law enforcement as they rushed over to this neighborhood. When they stopped across the street, I wanted to know what was going on. I immediately told my mate to hold on to the kids and make sure they did not follow me as I went over. On the way across, I could hear a female screaming. One of ours screeching, and then I heard the unmistakable sound of a human ballistic weapon that they call a shotgun as it discharged. Sprinting to the back, I saw something out of a drama-based program. There was Bill, holding a shotgun towards two adolescents when they were on the ground in pain. Not because he had shot them, no, but because their legs were being held by some sort of metal. As it turns out, Bill had ordered some varmint snap traps from Earth. Though very lethal to very small critters that get their heads caught in these snap traps, it is not that way for larger prey. For them, it is just very effective in immobilizing others through pressure and severe pain. The children's mother had arrived with another one of her kids as the law enforcement was arriving. The female Lappin had been screeching at Bill for having her children locked the way they were. When the law enforcement arrived, he was told that taking vegetables is hardly a crime in our society, which is true. The young ones were in too much pain to say anything as the female screamed about how they had baited her kids, then said, It's just a couple of vegetables, then claimed that he had to let the kids go as they were free to pilfer his garden whenever they choose. This pissed him off even more. Something I saw in his eyes. Something I worried about as Bill reminded the law enforcement that they were still trespassing on his property. When the law enforcement said it was a low crime and the youth would be released by morning, Bill lost it. He then said, then there's only one way they're going to learn. That's when he turned and fired a shot. The female screamed as she thought she'd just watched the execution of her children. Instead, he fired directly between them scaring them so much that both of the youths lost control of their bodily functions and mostly passed out, one catatonic and the other one completely unconscious, at least for a few seconds. When law enforcement drew their weapons, Bill just cocked his weapon and stood silent. As they screamed at him, he stood silent and still. After a few seconds, he lowered the weapon and walked over to the two, still crying now that they're awake, and covered in their own urine and feces. With law enforcement watching, he put the weapon across his back, held by some strange little strap. Walking over to the two youths, still in shock by what just happened, he reached down and pulled the spikes holding the traps in place, one with each of his large human hands, a feat that would take an adult lap in every single part of their body just to pull one out. He then dropped the spikes, reached up and grabbed the kids, one in each hand, grabbed them by the waist, lifted them up, and carried them both very unceremoniously to the gate of his property. Then he tossed them both off the property, saying, If any of you bastards come back to my property again, I'll kill you! He then turned to the law enforcement, Take these two bastards out of here and then simply turned back on his property after locking the gate. The two actually had to be taken to the medical facility with the traps still attached and visibly soiled their clothing. This was beyond embarrassing in our culture, especially having to walk to the transport in full view of the entire neighborhood as your own shorts dripped your own fluids. 
from what I heard, it took a total of four lapis to get the traps off each of the utes. Bill found this hilarious as he could easily do one by himself. After all this, we found out why he created such a large garden like so many humans do. Scheduled on one of the rest days for us, the entire town was actually invited to the human event that they called a barbecue. I still don't understand the name. Is that an abbreviation or a word? All the humans around town had brought piles of food, exquisitely prepared by all the humans hosting. They had games for all the children of different skill levels, and even brought items to cook their own food on. They even brought extra places for us to sit and eat on. As the human music played in the background, I noticed that the only family that was not present was the ones that had snuck on Bill's property. Walking over to talk to Bill, I remarked on how I now understand why he was so protective. He responded with, This is what good men do. We protect, and we share our bounty. Besides, I've got enough left for myself to last the rest of the year, so come on, eat up! And like the rest of my kind, we sure did. As I enjoyed this strange vegetable they called a cantelope, I turned to watch my children play the human game they called tag. While watching, I inquired on the type of food Bill and Jake and the other humans were eating. He told me that it was fried chicken, where Jake was eating a chicken fried steak. As they ate, one of the newer humans named Balthazar said, You know what I miss? Hoss and Pfeffer. Suddenly, the humans got extremely serious. I could see it in their eyes as they looked at him. Two of them reached out and struck Balthazar with their hands open saying, Dude! Another human lightened the mood by saying, Get a looping girlfriend. You can get a taste of home whenever you want if you do that. The humans then turned to look at the one who had said that, and then burst out laughing in that strange sound they make. All I could think was, humans have a strange culture. I see them steeped in respect, and they're extremely protective, yet they seem to actually care a whole lot more than they let on. At least the males do. The females seem to be care too much, and then actually show that they don't. It's very strange. Though I know they care, and they are definitely my friends, there are certain rules to remember, things never to do around a human, or to them. Never try and steal their mate, ever, unless you feel like getting beaten down really hard. Never, ever mess with their boats, or their vehicles, they really don't like it. Taking something without permission is definitely going to get you hurt. As long as you remember this, humans will always look out for us. Though, I would not find out the heights they would go for those they bond with until later. Rangar finished up his long-winded story and took a sip of a human drink they called tea. He looked into the faces of his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren as they seemed to be totally fixated on every word he had just spoken. One of the early pubescent boys asked, are you talking about the fox invasion, Grandfather? Ragnar smiled a bit before saying, Yes, now I will tell you about how it is important to never push a human beyond reason. Hello everybody, this is Syntex. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your viewership. Before I go, I need to send a giant thank you to one of my supporters, to... The sir. Yet yeah, that's what he goes by. So thank you, sir. Everybody else, I will see you on the next story. This is Syntex, ejecting.